Hello viewers, my name is Naeem Muche. I'm a systems engineer working for Veeam down here in Australia. The aim of today's session is to show you the simplicity of using Veeam and AltaVault to replicate your backup archives into Microsoft's Azure Cloud. Now I'll walk through the three main components being Veeam, AltaVault and Azure configurations. We'll first start with Azure where we'll have to configure a storage account and then create a blob container within that account. We'll then move on to configure AltaVault, the front end and the back end. The back end is the connection to the cloud, in this case to Azure, and the front end will be a SIF share being made available for our backup server. We'll then finish up with Veeam and we'll create a backup repository on the Veeam server and we'll use AltaVault, the AltaVault share for that. Then we'll go through and configure a Veeam backup copy to run to the repository, which is the AltaVault share. Uh, just a bit of a lab overview. As you can see, the on-site premise will have our production storage and our hypervisor. That'll be backing up to, to local fast disk. It'll then be pushed off into NetApp AltaVault, which will then do deduplication on that backup copy job. And then AltaVault um, via the backend will connect and replicate those backup files to Azure's cloud. So let's move on to Azure now and let's start configuring our service account. So this is the Azure portal. As you can see, portal.azure.com. So what we need now is some storage. We'll browse for that. If you browse through it here, um, just, you can use either method. I'll just use classic for the purpose of this demo. Click on add account. Let's give it a name. Let's just call it cloud storage theme. That's okay. So we'll just have to remember that name, cloud storage theme, which pricing tier. In this case, as we are doing just a demo, we'll choose the cheapest one which is locally redundant. So we'll select that one there and we'll click select down here. It's already in a default resource group, which is called group. The subscription we're using in this particular case is pay as you go. And as required, it's in Australia Southeast. We'll now create that account. So this normally takes about anywhere between two to 10 minutes. So what I'll do guys, I'll actually just pause the demo. So we've created our storage account here. Now we'll have to open it up and create uh, our blob container. So we'll open that up there. So we'll go into the services component here and select blob. And now this is where we'll create a container. Select container. And we'll add a container over here. So we'll just call this bucket. Bucket theme, that's fine. We'll make it a blob and we'll create that cont container now. That's been created. Now what we'll do, we'll go back to the default page of the storage account. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to copy across some of the credentials. So just to be uh, clear, we've now uh, finished our section in Azure and now we'll move across and configure the back end of AltaVault. So we'll have to copy across some things over here. So I'll add these into Notepad. We'll need to copy the storage account. The access keys, so we'll copy the primary. And if we remember the bucket name, let's uh, go to that again. We named the bucket, bucket Veeam. So we'll just type that in over here. So we've now finished our Azure component. Now we'll move over to the AltaVault device. So we'll go to AltaVault over here. It's just a web portal. And we'll go into the storage component and go to cloud settings. We'll select Microsoft Windows Azure storage. And this is where we'll have to enter our details. That's the storage account name. This is the primary key. And the bucket name was bucket beam. As we are using this for archiving, we'll enable the archiving option and we'll apply it here. There we are. It's connected successfully to the cloud. All that's needed is a service restart. So we'll go to settings and we'll restart. So while this happens, 
Um, I'll just explain again. We've now configured the back end to connect to Azure. It now has storage available in the cloud to which it replicates to. So now after this component is uh, restarted, what we'll have to do is now configure the front end, which is the connection to Veeam. So we'll go to storage. As we're doing it within, with SIFs, we'll go to SIFs here. That's the default share. We'll be creating a new SIF share for our Veeam backup server. So we'll click on add SIF share. We'll name this as Veeam share. We pin the share. We'll set the path name and also put in a comment for the share. Once those details are entered, we'll then go ahead and click add share. So there is our share up here. So what we can do now, we can go over to our Veeam backup server and configure the integration with UltraVault. This is our Veeam backup server. As mentioned earlier, this is a version 9. So that's why it looks a little bit different from the version 8 interface. Um, that said, as far as UltraVault is concerned for the configuration which we are doing, there is no difference. The same can and will work in version 8. So just wanted to clarify that. Now we'll go over to our backup infrastructure. First things first, I'll just put the, the share name. Um, I've configured a, a host entry on this Windows server and the host entry is called UltraVault. So just to be sure, I did do it earlier. So we'll just make sure we can speak to the UltraVault device over IP. Yep, we can see that. So I've got the UltraVault share. So what we'll do now is create a backup repository off the UltraVault share. So this is the backup repository section within backup infrastructure. We'll click on add repository. We'll name it UltraVault. It's a SIF share. We'll paste in the share location. Once again, we'll stick to the default settings just for the sake of this test. Okay, it's all done. We now have a repository which will appear in the background here in a few seconds. So now we can type write backups to the UltraVault repository. Now we'll move over to the backup. What we'll be doing, as mentioned in the earlier diagram, we'll be backing up from an existing backup to UltraVault. So in Veeam speak, that's called a backup copy. So what we'll do, I'll be specifically doing a SQL server. The SQL server is called APAC SQL FLD. Okay, so now we'll go over and create our backup copy job. So we'll select the backup copy icon in the menu bar at the top. Let's name this job SQL UltraVault. Next, let's add the machine. We'll add it from backups. We'll search in the search bar here for our SQL box. There it is. I'll add that. Make sure we go to the UltraVault target. Um, even though we're doing the defaults for the for this demo, what I just would like to explain is the checkbox down here, which is a new v feature in version 9. The checkbox reads, read the entire restore point from source backup instead of synthesizing it from increments. Now, this is a good idea to check yes for hybrid cloud DGIP devices. And the reason for that is a hybrid cloud device such as UltraVault and other DGIP cloud devices may have already sent increments up into the cloud. So the whole point of the synthetic process is to grab a full backup and all of these increments and then synthesize them into the one backup. The only challenge here with DGIP cloud devices is the DGIP cloud device like UltraVault may have already uh, placed up certain increments into the cloud. So to stop the device from actually bringing it down back from the cloud, this checkbox will ensure that the synthetic process will actually read from the source backups, so it won't actually go out into the cloud. And our backup copy is now ready. So let's go over, let's start this off. We'll click on sync now. And what this will do now, this will copy 
from the backup job itself into the backup copy and the repository for that will be the Alter Vault. So you should start seeing some activity here soon. So what I'll do now, I will pause this video. Okay, this backup copy job has now finished writing to the Alter Vault repository. So what we'll do now is we'll go over and have a quick look at Alter Vault and also Azure, and then we'll come back to Veeam and look at this backup job again. So let's go over to Alter Vault. Here we are, we'll just refresh that screen. What we can see here, is the amount which has already been committed to disk on the front end and the amount which is used at the back end and going up to the cloud. So let's have a quick look to see how the front end throughput went. Yep, so here you can see the burst at the front end throughput. This would have been our backup copy job and should see something similar for the back end throughput and the back end will probably be ongoing as obviously it's going uh, via WAN up to Azure. Yep, here we can see it's currently uploading to Azure at this very moment. Let's go over to Azure and have a quick look. Go to our storage account. Yep, and as you can see, these are the IOPS which are currently going against Azure and uploading the blobs into Azure. So let's go back to Veeam now to check out our backup. And let's just see if we can open it up and uh, browse some of the contents of that backup. So here we are, back to this particular host. We'll do restore guest files and we'll have a look at some of the Windows files within that backup. Here we are. So that's it guys, what we'll do, once again, how we went. What we did is we configured our account in Azure. So we configured our storage account and then our blob container, which had our bucket name. We went over to Alter Vault. We configured the backend account with the details of our Azure credentials. We configured a SIF share for the front end, which interfaced into Veeam. And then within Veeam, we added the, the, the front end share to a repository. And then we configured our backup copy jobs to use the Alter Vault repository. And once we ran that backup copy job to Alter Vault, Alt Vault then in the background would replicate it to the cloud. So thanks for joining.